The SD60 followed the unsuccessful release of the SD50, and while there were no major changes in the external appearance between the two models, the main improvement of the SD60 was the prime mover swapping over to the EMD 710. The original SD60 was considered a much better machine boasting 300 more horsepower with better fuel efficiency. The SD60 also improved several problems that plagued the SD50, like the prime mover and electrical problems that almost bankrupted EMD. While the original SD60 only sold a few hundred units, the variants would go on to sell thousands of examples throughout the 1990s. Atherin has produced several variants of the SD60 in the Genesis line, like the SD60i, SD60m in the dual window variant, and recently the SD60e. The SD60 tri-window version, or also known as the tri claps unit, has never been produced by Atherin, and is also the first entry into the Genesis 2.0 line for the SD60 family. The new release of the SD60M was announced in March 2020, and dealers took delivery of these units in early March 2021. For this run, Atherin has paint schemes for BNSF, BN, CP, NS, and UP, with a total of 8 paint schemes and 18 road numbers to offer. The model that we will be taking a look at today is BNSF 9212, an XBN unit that's been patched for BNSF, but still sports the Cascade Green from the BN era. There's been some large improvements to the SD60M with the release into the Genesis 2.0 line, and we'll go over some of those details across the model. The top of the cab has separately applied metal grab irons just above the distinct three-piece windshields that gives the locomotive the Triclops name. The etched metal windshield wipers are painted to match the prototype, and in this case are painted white to match the BN paint scheme. On top of the nose is the large style sand fill hatches, a road-specific detail for the BN locomotive. The black anti-slip section of the nose also sports two different styles of metal grab irons. More road-specific details are the LED illuminated number boards in a large square format, as well as the conductor side cab door with a small louvered window. The LED front headlight is nicely done with the white and green housings to match the BN logo printing. The front separately applied grab irons down the front of the nose are also painted to match the BN logo printing with either green or white. The front plastic handrails are molded in a green plastic and have a white accent painting near the side steps. Some of the more lighting features are the pilot mounted LED ditch lights in the gold and white color. Past the pilot is some of the more standard features like the new rubber MU cables, coupler cut bar, train line air hoses, front snowplow, and McHenry plastic scale couplers. Features like the coupler cut bar and snowplow have accent portions painted white where they would be handled by the conductor. The train line air hoses and MU cables are nicely done with the silver tips and the new rubber material on the Genesis 2.0 line. The conductor side of the cab has some good details to offer as well. Checking out the top of the windows, there are separately applied etched metal sunshades, and the actual windows are tinted like the prototype. The windows also have the side mirrors on the front portion as well. Just below the windows is the BNSF patch over the older BN logo, and the three-piece electrical panels are just below the BNSF logo. Towards the front of the cab are the separately applied plastic handrails that run up the front of the cab as well as next to the see-through etched metal side steps. Under the sill is the very extensive truck and braking details. Several details like the brake cylinders and associated brake piping can be seen running down the whole model. Lastly, tucked up under the sill is the LED illuminated ground lights that allow the conductor and engineer to see the ground while moving at low speeds in the dark. Down the long hood of the locomotive, there's a good chance to take a look at some of their model and road specific details. The first of these is the rotating roller bearing caps on all four truck side frames, a new addition to the ST60 model through the Genesis 2.0 product line. The blower housing kick plate is seen just above the walkway and next to, obviously, the blower housing, a feature that was not delivered on the BN units but was added sometime throughout its life. Stretching the entire length of the long hood is the fine plastic handrails molded in the BN Cascade Green and a good pairing to the walkway treading that runs down next to it. Under the sill is the fuel tank as well as the associated details like the fuel filler ports, fuel gauges, and the breather pipes. Lastly, the bell is tucked up under the sill and just in front of the fuel tank on the conductor's side. The rear of the locomotive is pretty standard detail-wise with no real unique features from common EMD locomotives. Starting up top is the very small lift ring details. They are located essentially down the entire roof of the model, but here at the back of the locomotive is a good opportunity to get a closer look. The top of the rear also sports a separately applied metal grab iron up top, as well as the metal grab iron ladder running down the conductor side. The lighting features on the back are the LED rear light and the LED backlit number boards on either side. Moving past more of the grab irons and some of the electrical panels on the back panel, the rest of the details are similar to the front 
with a coupler cup bar, rubber air hoses, spare knuckle couplers, and plastic lower shelf coupler. There are a few detailed paintings on the rear handrails with the white highlights. Coupler cup bar has the white highlights and the rubber air hoses have the silver highlighted glad hands. The engineer sided long hood is very similar to the conductor side, but there are a few differences. The first of these is the brake wheel located just behind the reporting numbers on the back half. Another difference is the louvered windows for the radiator sight glass. One of the most impressive new details on this SD60M is the use of a real chain on the brake details for the back engineer's truck. While the springs are still molded plastic, it's definitely a great change and look forward to details like this being added to other Genesis 2.0 models. Between the fuel tank and the side sill is an air tank receiver, a little difficult to see as all three components are painted in a flat black color. The silver AEI tag is added to the side sill just in front of the fuel tank filler ports. And just like the side steps across the locomotive, the two steps from the side walkways up to the engineer side of the cab are also see-through and have the edges painted white for safety visibility. Looking down the model, the roof section is removable and secured in place with magnets. I will say this is extremely well done on this model and I actually thought when I first got the locomotive that the roof was glued in place from how good the removable section actually looked. On top of the removable section is the firecracker style antennas that are separately applied. Down the entire section of the roof is the lift rings that were mentioned earlier and the Nathan three chime horn is located in the middle of the roof between the exhaust vent. The radiator section has three fans with the etched metal grills and fan details can be seen below the vents. The last small detail is the rear sand fill hatch at the very rear next to more lift ring details and a separately applied metal grab iron. With these Genesis models there's a lot of details in and around the trucks for the locomotives so I wanted to take a closer look at some of those details. While not part of the actual truck details this is also a good opportunity to take a look at some of the fuel tank details. We have the emergency shutoff button located on the side sill with the dual fuel filler ports and the actual fuel gauge on the tank. Right in front of the fuel tank is the dual air spitter valves with an array of air piping going back into the air receiver and underneath the body to the conductor side. Some of the air piping carries the sand through the sanding lines to help provide more traction for the first and third axles. On this particular truck, the first and third axles also have the rotating roller bearing caps, while the middle bearing cap is covered up by a shock absorber. One of the brand new features on this Genesis 2.0 model is the addition of the traction motor details that peek out on the ends of the truck side frames. It's pretty difficult to see the details even when trying to look for them, but it's a nice addition from Athern. Finally, one last detail to check out on this specific truck is the LED ground lights found on each of the front side trucks tucked up under the sill. Other details found on different truck side frames is the speed recorder found on the conductor's side front truck, which is a wire running from the first axle bearing cap up under the cab. The brake chain details found on the engineer's rear truck. The chain is a very nice detail and really elevates the model to the Genesis 2.0 level of detail we've come to expect. One word of caution is that the brake chain connects the bottom sill to the locomotive body, so if you need to work on the internals of the locomotive, the chain will need to be disconnected or it'll rip off the plastic details when you try to remove the shell. Removing the shell of the locomotive also reveals some improvements made to the model. Up top is the NS911 unit, or an SD60E, released a few years ago in the original Genesis line, while the lower model is the BNSF SD60M in the Genesis 2.0 line. The most obvious improvement is the wire management, where instead of running all the cab and exterior lights right to the board on the NS911 unit, the brass pin and contact system is now used. This is very nice if you want to work on the models and need to completely remove the shell from the body, as it's fairly annoying and difficult to do so on the 911 unit. The interior space in the model is also being more utilized with almost all the spaces now either full with additional weights or upgraded features, like moving from the round speakers in the 911 unit to the dual sugar cube speakers found on the Genesis 2.0 model. That being said, the interior of the model has almost no room for upgrades, so adding a super capacitor or swapping out May speakers may require changes to the diecast chassis. The mass of the locomotive was measured and was found to be 22.2 ounces or 632 grams. This is a little bit of an increase from the older Genesis SD60s which measured in at 21.1 ounces for the NS911 unit. With this extra weight the pulling power for the SD60M should have a slight power increase and this was measured using a force gauge across three different trials. The locomotive was found to peak out at 4.0 ounces of pulling power each time for an average pull power of 4.0 ounces or 113 grams. Realistically, this is about 40 to 50 rail cars, so the SD60 should be able to pull up to a mid-sized train with a single locomotive. 
I was able to pull 43 properly weighted grain cars on a level grade with the 9212 unit. The coupler heights were also measured and it was found that the front coupler was slightly low and the rear coupler was at the correct height. After a good extensive look at the details, I'm going to give this model some power and check out the lights and sounds from the Tsunami 2 decoder. For the final section, the model will be given a score based on the following categories and their respective point values. The packaging of the model is pretty standard Genesis packaging with no major differences to the Genesis 2.0 line. The Genesis box should be able to protect your models during transportation and storage. The 9212 unit's actually a pretty short history, getting the patchwork done in 2006 but then a renumber in 2008, so the model is only 100% accurate for a two year period. But Athern still did a good job of providing a model that has a lot of model and road specific details for a prototype with a relatively short lifespan. The paint on the model is overall very nicely done. The cascade green color was changed several times throughout the BN era, but looks good under layout lighting. There wasn't any major issues with paint bleeding or fuzzy lines, but there was a one small issue where the front handrail had some large paint chips missing out on the white accent portion, so I took away one point. I was really impressed by the details on this model. I think Atherin is definitely moving in the right direction with the Genesis 2.0 line in terms of details, and I'm excited for more models to be added to the line. I thought details-wise there wasn't really anything that could be added, and the details that were included were executed very nicely. For the motor and electronics, the Genesis driveline hasn't had any major changes in a while, but it's pretty bulletproof and gets the job done well. Taking off the body shell reveals that Athern has really jammed everything in there and hasn't left any wasted space, which is unfortunate if you want to add a capacitor bank, which is not included. My model is also slightly disappointing as the engineer's side ditch light has not been fitted completely into the housing, causing the light to be noticeably less bright compared to the other ditch light on the conductor side. With the light pretty well glued into place, the fix would be rather troublesome and prone to breakage, so I'm going to take away two points for the offset light and one point for the lack of a supercapacitor on this level of detail. The couplers, trucks, and wheels are once again all pretty standard. The metal wheels are all engaged and all 12 wheels act as electrical pickups and provide tractive effort towards the rails. The McHenry couplers are scale plastic lower shelf couplers and accurate to the prototype, but at this price range should really be some sort of metal coupler. Additionally, the front coupler was slightly low while the rear coupler was at the correct height, so I'm going to take away three points. One for the coupler height and two for the plastic couplers. The value of this locomotive was a pretty fair fit. The MSRP is pretty high at 340 but the discounts were relatively good and brought this locomotive down to almost 250 and I thought that was a pretty good price for a DCC and sound model at this drive and this detail level. And for miscellaneous, the locomotive obviously has good details, paint, and drive, but the only small issue I found was there was no extra roller bearing caps, which I thought was pretty weird, as other manufacturers include it, and I've seen on social media sites, where some people have had these caps fall off during transportation, so I'm going to head and take away one point. Tallying up all the points, that gives us a total of 92 out of 100, or a low A for the grading. The model can be also compared to the other recently reviewed locomotives, and it comes in tied for second in the rankings, tied with the other recent release of the Athern Genesis SD80 Mac. 
To wrap up the review, I think the SD60 is a very welcome addition to the Genesis 2.0 line, and I think the improvements that Atherin has made to the model is very well done, and I hope that they continue to improve other Genesis models that maybe haven't had an update in a little bit. I really enjoyed a lot of the small details like the real chain and the rotating roller bearing caps, as well as the overall performance of the locomotive. I can't wait for Atherin to produce more versions of the Triclops units, like the BNSF Heritage 3 renumbered units, as well as some of the other versions like the SD60i or the two-windowed version of the SD60M. I definitely recommend picking up this locomotive if you're modeling anywhere from the late 20th century to the modern era. So that's all I got for this review. Let me know what you guys think about the review. I'm always very appreciative of your guys' thoughts and comments and continue to look for ways to improve the videos. So with that, I'm going to leave you guys with a few run-by shots, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.